Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, man, you know it. It don't work without you guys. So let's get open for business. And it looks like the football guys have been awake since last night's live stream. Because they're excited. Think about this. This is the last weekend before basically the marathon begins. The Dallas Cowboys will be headed to Oxnard having their first practice next Friday. We're, when we do our live stream, the Dallas Cowboys will be just getting off the field. I'm excited. I am ecstatic. And who knows what this season will bring. I believe that the Dallas Cowboys have done an incredible job of amassing talent. I, you know, in all the years that I've been watching the Dallas Cowboys, we have been short talent somewhere on the field since the 90s. They have not been able to get, you know, sometimes the defense has been real good, sometimes the offense has been real good. But this is the first time that I feel like we have a great collection of talent. And when you look at it, I, I mean, 2017, we did have 13 pro bowlers and you know, number one seed and things, but we just didn't get it done. But I'm hoping that with this collection, we've got some all-stars out here. We've got some people that are going to be incredible. And it's just a matter of taking all of that raw talent and turning it into one cohesive group. And there's been a lot of talk about my quarterback. You know, we know all of the, the names and the derogatory comments from Dak Trash Puck, uh, Dash, Dak Trashcott to uh, Mr. Dink and Dunker, you know, the fourth round draft pick, the guy that, you know, a lot of you don't believe. And that's okay. I get that. But. I want to use this clip to more, this morning from the Dallas Cowboys. Hopefully I don't get shut down for it. But this is actually a great chalk talk moment between Brian Brodus and Dak Prescott. And he's telegraphing, talking about this pass play. And this is one of those ones that people who hate Dak will just, they, they won't discuss this. And I ask you guys, if you honestly believe that Dak Prescott is not the guy, if you honestly believe that he can't get any better than where he is and that he is really a bum, I ask you about this play right here. So let's go to the tape. Fourth and 15, snap out of the gun, five-man rush. He spins away from Vernon, runs left. He can run, but he can also throw it in the end zone, diving but caught out of the back of the end zone. That's a touchdown. Beasley is down that on is the field. That is a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. That is a touchdown. Tale of the Tape, presented by Essilor. Hey, Dak, thanks for joining us for Tale of the Tape. Always appreciate your time. Okay, I'm going to take you back to a Week 17 game, and I still – I've watched this play hundreds of times, and I don't know how you pulled this thing off. I, I really don't. And this is the pass that you threw – to Cole Beasley to, to give the Cowboys a chance to win this football game. And if I could walk you through it at a couple of different levels here. If we run the play forward for him here a little bit, please. Stop it right there. When did you feel the pressure? I mean, your eyes are down the field right now. Right. You're trying to plant your steps, and Vernon's on you before you know it. When did you feel him right there? Yeah, I mean, pretty early. Uh, as you said, my eyes are, my eyes are down fit right now. Uh, we've got an all-seams called right here. and. Pocket awareness. I'm trying to trying to read the safety thing where I'm gonna go with the ball, but um, I actually just kind of feel this coming on my back, uh, and at that point I'm like I got to get away from that for, before anything. So the first thing, I mean, okay, eyes downfield. Are you trying to locate Beasley across? I mean, you said you're looking for the safety, but you had an idea. Okay, you got Beasley. It's gonna come all the way back across. So that's kind of what you're trying to pick up on this route. Yeah. So right here, I mean, we've got the four verticals. Beasley's gonna be the bender, which he's gonna bend inside the safety. So right now, just. Uh, just checking out the safeties, making sure that they're staying back uh, and expecting Beasley to bend across the face. But um, before I even hit the top of my drop, Vernon's, he's back yeah. there. So, so but the, the idea is, okay, in a, in a perfect world, Fleming's got Vernon taken care of secure right, right there. Front of the pocket's clean. Smith's going to try and help if he can. But you're just, you're just going to, you're hoping for the best. But now it turns into, okay, I got to go be a football player here right, right now. Okay, let's run it forward, forward a, football, a little bit. He wasn't one before then, right? The situation right here, are you thinking about running this football at this point in time? No, I'm not at all. Not uh, at all? No, not at all at this point. At this point, uh, usually when you scramble, a lot of guys, good receivers, make plays downfield. Sure. You know how to uh, get away from the defender. So at this point, I'm just looking downfield for who's going to make that move. Yeah, but at this point in time, though, from the sideline, Beasley hasn't appeared yet. No, he's I mean, it, it's going to be, when we get to the top of this play, it's going to be a flash. 
Okay, so we're not going to run. What about throwing the ball to Rod Smith right there? Yeah, I mean, I want to say it was fourth and 15. Right. Or so so, so I mean, you're thinking, nah. Thinking of throwing it to Rod right there. Sure, you can get that completion, but Rod's going to have to break that tackle, and that's right. tough. Uh, yeah, right now I'm thinking just extend the play more. I mean, nobody's truly just on me or making me throw it right at this moment. So at this point, I'm just trying to extend the play and, and wait for a guy to come open. Okay, let's run the play forward here. Stop it right there. What is that? I have never seen a guy make a throw like that, that far down the field with that type of body position. That's yeah, just I mean, God-given talent right there. Mom and dad right there. I mean, what? Nah, that's, I mean, a, that's, what? A, that's a lot of work. Uh, I mean, okay, how does somebody, how, I mean, that's something we wouldn't coach throw. a quarterback to do. Quarterbacks going to their left, throwing the ball, like, that's a hard thing for them to do. Right. But you make this look so easy all the time. That's like one of your traits, one of your best traits is throwing that thing going left. Yeah, but, sure. I mean, I think it's just uh, going left. You have, one of the things you have to do as being a quarterback is you have to make sure you get your, your shoulders going forward. Right. Uh, and that's something I've always worked on. So here to, to be able to get my shoulders going forward and uh, it was this throws to win the game and I wanted to win the game. So Sure. Did you feel like oh, did I have to throw it to a spot or you just trusted that Beasley was going to get to where you needed to throw it? Well, when Beasley turned initially, I knew I could, I just, I could just throw it to a spot and the defender's back was to us. So he has right. to, they, have a, they have a hard time locating the ball in the air, and I know Beasley sees it. He's going to be able to flash and go get it. Uh, and he just made a hell of a play of going to get the ball. There we go. Lay that thing out. I still, like I say, I've watched that thing a hundred times. I don't know how you completed that pass. Yeah, actually, I thought it was a touchdown, and then Beasley gets up and he does that slap the ball like it was incomplete. Right. It made me second guess myself. But yeah. But able to get the review in. Yeah, you got the review, though. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, you know, that's one of those things that, that that's an unbelievable play. And, you know, Dak has a lot to learn. But, you know, every football player out there has a lot to learn. You know, I guarantee you Tom Brady is still learning some things and getting some new tricks and stuff. But one of the things, the problem sometimes with Dak is because he does have that arm strength. And understand, when you're going to the left, your momentum is to the left, it's harder to get that body whip. And it's funny because I, I, I used to throw the shot put in the discus. And you think about throwing a shot put, well, that's just arm strength, but it's really not. It's really about being in the position to make your body like a whip. you having to have your foot underneath of you and being into that bent position where you can uncoil and recoil. And that's the same thing about throwing the football. You know, you need to have that foot planted, you know, in front of you so that way you can pull your body and whip it to really put that zip on it. So throwing the football where he was basically off balance and throwing away from him going to the left, it's a naturally thing. That's why they always say is throwing across the grain because, one, the defenders are all going in that direction. And so you're throwing that way where they're coming to it. Two, you're not able to put as much oomph on there. But he got the ball down there, and that was an incredible play. And it cuts off to, uh, you know, uh, Brian Brodus on that interview. But what I'm hoping with the Dallas Cowboys, we have always been since 2014. 2014 was the year that the Dallas Cowboys changed what they were doing out of necessity. If you remember that first game where – Tony Romo had three interceptions because he was coming back off back injury. And it just did not look like he could throw the ball downfield. They had DeMarco Murray, and the Cowboys said, we're going to have to lean on DeMarco Murray until Tony Romo's completely healed. But they found something. They realized that those offensive linemen that they had, you know, Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, were road graders. And they realized they could have a lot of success just churning up the football. And I believe... 2014 because they were so successful at doing that that they just basically kicked back and said you know we got this let's just keep doing what we're doing and we don't need to change anything we got a great offensive line we got a running back we just keep running and churning the football and unfortunately teams started to catch up Because they knew exactly what you're going to do. You're predictable. First down, everybody knows the Cowboys are going to run the ball with Zeke Elliott. And I'm hoping that now that Dak is in his fourth year, which is the year that traditionally wide receivers, excuse me, that quarterbacks really take that next step. You know, you've got the rookie year where you're surprising people, and a lot of times you'll see ones that come out and play great because nobody knows what they're going to do. There's no book out on them. Second year, more 
of the playbook is dumped on them and defenses learn more about them. There's a book out on them, so you have a sophomore slump. Third year is kind of the recovery year. Fourth year is the year that usually becomes that big year. Troy Aikman's best season was his fourth year. Russell Wilson literally blew up after you know his fourth year. Big Ben, almost always, if you look at the statistics, I would say 80% of the pro quarterbacks, the fourth year is the big jump year. And if that is the case, and now that we have some dynamic wide receivers and Randall Cobb, as well as uh, Michael Gallup, and of course Amari Cooper, and getting back a security blanket like Jason Witten, and getting away from Scott Linehan and his dinosaur offense, that you're going to see a lot more passing. And for no other reason, I believe it's good for the team for the long haul. One, defenses aren't going to know how to stop you. They're going to have to pay basic defenses to try and cover everything. And they're not going to be able to cover all the weapons. Two, you're going to prolong Zeke Elliott's career because we're not pounding him constantly 30 times, you know, up the middle where he's going to wear out in a couple of seasons. Three, we're going to be more balanced. Not all relying on the run, not all relying on the pass. And that will make you a better team because sometimes you can't run the football and you need to be able to pass. Other times, you got better matchups for running the football because the defensive line stinks. So you want to be able to be as versatile as possible. And i got to tell you, I'm excited as can be, and that's my quarterback right there. And that shows you that one play, that one tape, shows you that all of the stuff that you hear about Dak Prescott, he's not accurate, his mechanics are bad, you know, he can't throw the fall down the field. That one dispels all those myths in that one play. All right, guys, i got lots of work to do here. I've got to get this man cave, time's getting short, ready for the season. So I've got to finish work, do some work on the outside before it gets too hot. And then I'm going to do some more work on the inside. And I still have some changes that we're going to do here at the set as well to try and make the experience as best as possible. I'm Mark Holmes, and I hope you have a great, productive weekend. And remember, make the most of each day. I'll see you soon.